What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the RSS Podcast. Matt and David here. Got a good one. Let's go. Hello, hello, hello. We're back. <laughs> We're back. We're back, and you can see us. It feels... Eight, oh, yeah, that that is probably the biggest change, isn't it? Um, yeah. It feels I like think of what my face is doing now. Yeah. I think funny how we're both wearing hats now all of a sudden, isn't it, David? <laughs> both Quick answer on. of why that is. Oh, it's all flat. That's I'll silly. That oh, that's going, what yeah. I messaged my I messaged my barber yesterday. I was like, Prash, I need oh, a haircut. As a personal barber. That's what that's what kind of money the RSS podcast is bringing in. Is that is that it? <laughs> we got personal bar. Yeah, exactly. That he He's goes to David, comes back to me, then goes back to David. Oh, <laughs> cuts every week. <laughs> and that's why we're wearing hats. <laughs> there yeah. you go. So. We'll How start, you doing? How's the new job? First week? It, it First week. Do you know what? I won't lie. It is quite scary. I think it was my second day. It was quite scary thinking that I'll be doing this for the rest of my life. Like not not because of the place, but just the the fact that it's a full time job. I will now have two days off in a week and five days working in a week. It's it's still mind boggling to me how that's the thing. I know. I tried it for go one go summer. I was uni. like, no, go back to uni. I know. I'm I'm thinking. Give me my forty days vacation. <laughs> I'm thinking Hayden did it right. I might start a completely new course. Do you think he's? Do you think <laughs> there's uh, any engineering? Just keep just keep in? cycling through. In yeah. 10 years, they'll be like, yeah, I just started an arts degree. <laughs> what? Business would <laughs> take me again. Yeah, that's hilarious. But, but yeah, I am enjoying it. It is really nice. Yeah, that's awesome. That's exciting. It was, su- it was such a long time coming. Like it, was, it was in the pipeline for so long. that I think you got it. Like When did you actually, when did they call you and said, yeah, we're offering you the job? That must have been September. It must yeah, have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, early September, I think it was. Um, That's yeah, that insane. Was a, that was really funny, um, really interesting. Yeah. Um, quite a yeah, quite a long time. Um, I love being unemployed. You've got so much free time. Um, the only <laughs> issue is you realise no money's coming in, so then you do have to become employed. Yeah, it's a tough. That's that stuff. But no, yeah. that's awesome that it's going well. You you got in actually to be fair a pretty good time because you're gonna work for what three weeks and then have have like a week and a half off for Christmas. Smart Honestly, man. as as well, people that work in education have it good because you get you get all summer off, don't you? It's such hard work, David. David, that's unreal. Nice. I mean, I can't complain. I have <laughs> I have a good I have a good setup as well, but but you get all summer off. That is unbelievable. To be fair, to be fair, I don't get all summer off because oh. I'm part of the gym. It's not part of the actual school. So commercial uh, use it. Yeah. So right. dilemma there. So uh, yeah. actually, David, I am a hard worker. Um, He's a hard worker, folks. Put yeah, that well. on. Put that on the list. That's Yo, can, you, can you just like tilt your screen down? Is that possible a little bit? Because you're right now, you're just ahead. Is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes, that's way better. Boom, guns, gun show. Let's uh, let's jump into sports news. What do you got for us? Well, actually, what have I got? What a, what a... <laughs> Canada was sad times. Actually, we did predictions a couple of weeks ago, and both of my countries are out. I will have Can- to say Canada's not a surprise. I'm still proud of the boys. Uh, because this was the first time Canada got into this World Cup, maybe ever, or since like the 60s or something. So that's awesome. Obviously, you don't go to the World Cup to try to lose. They put up a good fight. I think Belgium, the Belgium game, I think took it out of them, because then the ones after that, you're probably not as strong showing as, as they wanted to. But that's huge, at least for Canadian men's soccer to get into the World Cup. Canadian women's soccer kills it. They're they're really really good on the world scene, but the men's men's have struggled. So that that's exciting. I think that's a huge step up in the, a huge step in the right direction for them. Um, there you go. Sorry. And, and hopefully that just 
build just to traction. Sorry. Just to cut what? you in, fact check, fact checker. Oh. Canada oh. have been in the World Cup 1986 and in 2022. But good luck, good news, David. 1986. Oh, I got 86-68. <laughs> yeah, they'll be they'll be playing in the 2026 World Cup, and that that's when they'll bring it home, I think. Wait, oh, but they don't have to qualify. I am so confused by that. I I am genuinely confused. Oh, that's because it's um, it's going to be in America, so they qualify as co-hosts. Lucky, oh, sick, Lucky. nice. That's so, the way to do it. That's their whole strategy, right? They're like, we'll get into the one before. We'll just like we'll ease pe- we'll ease in people will be like ah oh, that's not good then we'll get automatic so you won't have to play all of the like qualifying games right and then we'll just come in and just swipe everyone Hold off the see ya. Close your chest, and take off. it home take it home to the north yeah and also Germany's out now that what happened there I'll tell you what like, it, I watched the games yesterday. Um, well, uh, yeah, I was watching the games yesterday. So, in order for Spain to go through, Germany had to win. So, uh, you know, thank you, David, for letting us go through. But at half time, oh, against again on their last game, but they were already kicked out at that point, didn't? Weren't they? No, no, no. They, uh, I think that. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh no. They, yeah, no, no. I think they were because it would have been um, Costa Rica because it was one nil Japan against Spain, then one nil Costa Rica against Germany. Then half time, right? Hit. No, sorry, sorry. Germany w- were winning one nil. I've got that. Oh, I've messed this whole thing up. Spain were winning one nil against Ge- uh, Japan, and then Germany were winning one nil against Costa Rica. Half time hit. Japan suddenly score two goals in concession, so that's two one Japan. Then G- Germany start losing two one to Costa Rica, which I thought was ridiculous. So that meant Spain and Germany were going to be knocked out of the World Cup. But luckily, right. the Germans. David, I think, gave a quick call to the captain. Spoke to Thomas Muller and said, "Look, we need to keep Spain right. in. My good friend Matthew is a yeah. good, you know, podcast <laughs> friend of mine. We need to keep quick, him in. Quick halftime, oi, Achtung. Yeah. yeah, at least yeah, <laughs> best of spielen, one danke. Of there you go, there you go. And he was doing all of that, and then he was like, <laughs> we need one of the members of the RSS podcast still in the World Cup. So luckily, yeah. Germany managed to beat Costa Rica four two, and now Spain are Spain are through. So thank you for that, David." Yeah, that's crazy. I guess Germany did have their reign though, like a few World Cups ago, right? And now, now they're kind of in the rebuild phase. I'm right. Am I wrong to say that? I mean, I remember the time when Germany beat Brazil seven-one. They were the absolute juggernauts on the world yeah. scene, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. But um, I think now it's time for rebuilding phase. Yeah. yeah. It all went downhill starting when we were playing England. I think it was in the semifinals of the Euros. Yeah. Was it last year or two years ago? And we were down, I think it was 2-1, and the captain was on a breakaway and hit the post. That was the breaking point. It's been downhill since then. <laughs> downhill. Been downhill. Yeah. Uh, and then England. I mean, I guess they just, um, everyone thought could Wales do it, but they definitely could not do it. Um, they lost. I think 3-0, wasn't it? Yeah, Marcus yeah, Rashford. So, the from a so England's through. They're yeah, around England. 16. Um, That'll be fun. It'll be, yeah, it'll be very interesting. I think we'll get another poll up. Um, get everyone on Instagram buzzing. Get the predictions yeah. in. I put the prediction, you know, for England-US. I thought big <laughs> England-US. 0-0. Zero, like, zero. Who's going to win? Everyone's like voting, voting. I didn't put a, a draw as an option. Um, the, so the, amount of, the amount of memes that came after that came after that was hilarious of like soccer's soccer no trust me soccer is such a good sport i love watching two teams do nothing for 90 minutes the best sport in the world <laughs> 90, 90 minutes of my life gone that's uh, hilarious yeah. But, yeah moving on uh sports news slightly somber one yeah doddy weir um passed away uh last week uh he was a legend on and off the pitch as renowned for his top class rugby career and as as his pioneering and dedication in tackling motor neurone disease mm. he was a british and irish lion legend he was a scottish legend um all of the sort of remarks made by his teammates by his family everyone saw him as a great guy and some of the stories you know he just tackled motor neurone disease as he tackled in rugby you know it was dominant he just he just kept moving nothing would stop him um so it's yeah, sad news that he's passed away. 
Um, yeah, if you do have any money lying around, it will be great to donate to his foundation, the Doddy Weir Foundation, and it will help others struggling with the, with this disease. Um, it was a sad, sad story in the rugby world, um, and he'll be sorely missed. Hmm. It, it's always so sad when you grow up watching these legends play, and then they pass away. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's such a strange feeling, isn't it? Because... You know, you sort of idolise these people and you sort of, you know, you're living with them, especially now in age with uh, in social media and you get to be yeah. behind the scenes with them a lot. You're sort of getting to see more of their lives and you feel more part of it. So it is, it is incredibly sad when someone you look up to, um, you know, passes away. And with that, he did leave some great morals. You know, he, he found out that he had this disease, but he would stop at nothing in order mm. to tackle it he would not let anyone sort of be stuck in a moment of despair he would just get pick them off of, off from their feet and tackle the tackle the next stage coming you know so it was it was a great role model and a, a great influence for other people great morals to leave behind mm. on that somber note yeah yeah let's move on to topics of the day topic of the day John I think you've written down the first one Matt I've written down both of them that is true that is true, <laughs> that is true. No, did you see this I As, saw, I think... you know who the liver king is right if, if no one knows listening who the liver king is go just type in liver king on Instagram YouTube Google you'll figure it out but it's this it's this guy who he he preaches these nine tenants that is basically getting back to living. I don't know, like the Neanderthals, <laughs> basically like, you know, like he's running around bare feet, eating all this raw meat and stuff like that. Um, and he's like, if you go back to that, then you can basically get ripped is what he's saying and live an awesome life. And and from that, he's selling all these supplements like liver oil and all these kind of different stuff. Like there's so many different companies that he has now and is making millions and millions of dollars. And the problem is he's always like he's yoked. He's jacked. And he's always said that he's that he's natural. Which anyone with with any sort of, you know, sports science back nutritional background has been in the gym background knows he's not. Like he shredded a hundred percent of the year. Yeah. And like you just can't get a physique like that without getting being on roids unless you're an absolute freak of nature. Do you know what I mean? Um even but he's like his whole yeah. thing is like you're I'm natural, I've never touched drugs, and he said that so often. And he's like, No, it's because of these things, so buy these things, and he's making money off of them, off of it, right? And it's and it's just come out. Well, it's just been like these these emails have been leaked that basically just gives a whole rundown of the tens of thousands of dollars he spends per month on 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 steroids and other and other PEDs, performance enhancing drugs. Head. But um yeah, the thing is strange. I guess I'll because because you know, it's so easy to notice someone who's on performance enhancing drugs, ped, peds. Um, you look at him and there's no way, like, say you're on a carnival diet, say you're only eating, you know, bone marrow, liver, all of this, testicles. Um, there's, you know, there's no direct, you can't be that yoked. You can't just have that much of amount of muscle, massive muscle. <clears throat> Sorry, he's he's mass. well he's saying that like if you if you stick to the nine tenants and the ancestral tenants that yeah, you yeah. can increase your naturally occurring testosterone. And so basically that way that's why your testosterone's so high and that that's why you can get just absolutely yoked. Yeah. And and but then being the devil's advocate, I like I wonder how those emails got exposed though. That's what I was thinking as well. Well, exactly. So this guy, this uh, 
more more plates more dates i think is his name so he's a pretty well-known uh podcaster youtuber like fitness guy he made a video and basically said that these emails just showed up in his inbox and it's just email after email of liver king brian johnson i think his actual name is yeah, of yeah. talking to some guy who's like the guy that he gets all the drugs from and it's like this is who i am this is what i do this is what i take these are my goals and it's just lists and emails after emails and i was thinking wait so we're just gonna believe that all these emails just appeared in this guy's inbox with all of this information that's like couldn't be yeah. laid out like more plainly you know and so that's yeah. the other side of it it's like okay well i mean i don't i w i don't disagree that the guy is on drugs he's absolutely on drugs no question yeah. about it but how this like came about is pretty sketchy sketchy as well yeah and, and but it makes for good news just another thing like i quickly put into youtube um because I, I you know i like testing the levels of bias um, yeah. around area. and i put into youtube more plates more dates liver king and he's recently obviously he made one year uh, uh oh, he made one video three days ago obviously exposing him with these emails but then he's also made a, a video on him a year ago another video on him nine months ago um another one four months ago another one on uh, da, 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 one year ago again it's it's it at what point do you keep targeting someone that you can fabricate an email. I'm not saying he did, but just to constant videos, I'm not defending him. Um, I'm just trying to play, you know, the other side because I mean, have you seen? You can fabricate tweets now. You know, you can you can oh, edit and so easy. And make tweets. So it's like, how, how easy is, is is it to make these emails? And then even if you put this video in, there's 20 other videos with all nine like 20,000 views, 1.4 million views, 638 yeah. views, 2.8 million views, all yeah. surrounding the Liver King lying and all of this because of these emails but yeah i just i just don't know how those emails would have been leaked because there's obviously as you know getting steroids from someone legit there's obviously got to have a bit of confed confetti confidentiality there you go nice confidentiality. there it is um so it's just it's strange that um that it would have been leaked like that especially something where you know you wouldn't want them to be leaked so i just i know i'm not denying that he's not on anything because well actually up, i just pulled up his instagram I, I just pulled up his instagram yeah and eight hours ago he posted it posted a reel of him talking but the caption says the caption says a real man knows when it's time to look in the mirror to start taking full accountability for his actions i've neglected to model two of the most important values i preach honor and integrity today this changes i owe you an apology link in bio so David, so that, in news, um, I actually believe those emails. So I can now confirm those emails are true. <laughs> uh, forget everything I said. Um, <laughs> I just, I know but I, it is, I think, I think it's good to talk about because, I mean, we, we get we get so much information and so much news every single day, every single second of every single day thrown at us. And I think it is important not to dismiss them and, and be you no know, that's not true that's not true and not believe anything but i think it's important to be critical and to before you jump into something this is true to digest it take it in and maybe do a little bit of critical thinking of how reliable is this do a bit of your own research maybe i think that's important and yeah and unfortunately you know this liver king guy is a bit of a fraud you know he said so many fun. times so many times that he was on drugs and and for and unfortunately it it does affect a lot of people who don't come from a sports science background and really do believe them um yeah. so i think i think being critical isn't a bad thing um as long to a point obviously obviously you know yeah but, I, I mean like and it take a, it takes us back to, i can't remember this a specific episode number but there was a episode that we did talking about how questioning raising questions and actually questioning your thoughts and what you see online is actually extremely important to not actually Absolutely. Believe everything that's out there actually question it and you know on this one occasion i put, did a perfect example of questioning it obviously getting it wrong but now i can firmly believe what 
what's actually happened now that we've you've done the research on your half found out that the liver king has actually just ad basically admitted it um and that now that there's no bias surrounding it i what i've by questioning it i can finally find the truth and firmly believe that what's happened's happened instead of just believing something but not really understanding it and then just spurting yeah. it because then I get caught out myself um and not hold myself accountable like the liver king's doing now so there you go i mean wow crazy crazy yeah. crazy i just don't get how those emails got leaked whoever leaked them, i know crazy. i know some guy is not happy with them it was like you know what Boop. yeah yeah didn't the pay him the 11 grand he he spent over 11 grand a month on drugs it was russell that's wilson. insane russell wilson um the american football quarterback uh i think he used to play for seattle seahawks he spent like reportedly he spent like three million dollars in one year for like personal trainer nutritionist physiotherapist massage you know that's wild um i mean obviously that's half of what david and i spend on haircuts every week but um that's <laughs> no that's man cool. we're sponsored we get those for free yeah rss <laughs> haircuts <laughs> yeah yeah so that was, yeah just a quick quick little news second one um I saw this on LinkedIn and I thought this was really interesting. So uh, Tim Gabbett, I saw this on, on it just came up on my LinkedIn. Um, he has 20 years experience working in applied sports scientists with athletes, coaches from a wide range of sports, has a PhD in human physiology that he got in 2000. Uh, completed a second PhD in applied science and professional football in 2011. He has two PhDs. That's ridiculous. Uh, with special reference to physical demands, injury prevention, skill acquisition. He's worked with common, Commonwealth Games athletes, Olympic athletes, uh, and continues to work as a sports scientist and coaching consultant for several high performance teams around the world. So this guy knows, knows what's up. Like he's no schmuck. Yeah. He he posted something which I just caught my eye and I'll and I'll read about it. Well, no, I'll read it to you. Sorry. Um it, the whole topic of like overtraining is huge nowadays, especially in um team sports and trying to figure out how to one what is load? How do you how do you um not calculate load, but how do you, oh, what's, what's the word? How do you calculate load, track load? What is it? How do you track it? And what does it mean for injury prevention performance, right? Can you prevent injuries? To a certain extent, I would say yes, but that's a bit of a, pandora's box it's like trying to predict performance it's so multifactorial anyways there's this whole thing about you know chronic load and injury risk and all this kind of stuff and and he he put something up that says he said this he said i've lost track of the times people have said to me i'm not training harder i'm training smarter when i dig a little deeper this invariably means managing athletes away from training and in many cases wrapping them in cotton wool so they won't break break but take a look at the graph on the right there's a graph down there we'll put it up this is real data from real athletes higher training loads are associated with lower injury risk this is true this is a true paradox because it goes against everything the textbook tells us training harder is training smarter that's what he said and that caught my eye because i was that I mean, where, where do we even start? What's this about? Over, it's, a, it's about overtraining, you know, acute load versus chronic load. So for those who aren't familiar with that, chronic load would be the accumulation of what you've done for, let's say, the last two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And then acute load is what you do on a daily basis or weekly basis. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so there's... Uh, it came out of cricket a few years ago where they where they where they they calculated this ratio this acute to chronic 
ratio. So how, how much you did today and how does that compare to what you've done on an average across the last four weeks? And if what you did today is higher by like 1.5 times than what than the average of your last four weeks, they show that increased your risk for injury. Um, and then you can use that obviously for like performance readiness and all that. And I just thought is is interesting because what he said, that was very strong language that he used. Uh, so I thought, oh, it's like just see interested in in chatting a little bit about that is overtraining a myth, which is sort of what he's implying on on the post here. Um, what do you think about it? Or do you have any, any thoughts before we kind of dive into the paper? Yeah. <clears throat> so I think the first time I heard about Tim Gabbard being mentioned was when I was talking about central or peripheral fatigue. Um, and it's sort of the, the dilemma between, I think he was discussing whether it's the heart or like your body stopping you from dying essentially or collapsing, or is it the mind? that's controlling the whole nervous system and shuts down before you can get to the point of exhaustion. Right. And it's the first one I heard about it when he was sort of um, prominent in the discussion surrounding that. Yeah, and, and central fatigue, again, central fatigue being kind of your brain and spinal cord. Yeah. And then fatigue that happens in there for whatever reason, we won't get into that. And then peripheral fatigue being you know, your distal neurons coming out of your spinal cord, the including neurons. then yeah. your muscles. So whatever fatigue happens there. Yeah. Yeah. And he's always been a very outspoken person. Like he, he's not afraid to share his view on things, which is obviously it's great because it gets uh, the whole sport community talking. And um, I think, you know, a point I want to make is it's it is such a difficult dilemma because an athlete is such a multifactorial dilemma. Um, because as a coach, in order to manage the physiological stresses that are being imposed, you've got to also, you know, you want to reduce the risk of injury. So by doing that, you couldn't, you can't only focus on the physiological sort of, you know, like the physical, physiological, the physical of a body. You can't, you got to also realize and take into fact the mental um, health of someone as well. Right. And the different stresses that can come. So it is, it is a very multifactorial dilemma with so many different areas to look at um but he, he does raise a good point um so i think we dive into his paper yeah well what do you think about when he says um i'm just coming up what do you think about when he says you know when i dig a little deeper this invariably means managing athletes away from training and this part and in many cases wrapping them in cotton wool so they won't break He's implying that athletes are soft yeah. these days like and that uh, and that coaches are wrapping them up and being like, oh, don't train. Don't train too hard because we don't want to overtrain. It's difficult. And he's obviously got way more experience than I do. And so oh. maybe he's seen, you know, <laughs> yeah. two PhDs. That's so I'm I just happy to be having gotten kicked out of my first one in the last first two months. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but what? Yeah, just from your ex from your experience, what do you think about that? Because that's a pretty big statement. It is. A, it is a massive statement. But then I, I look at both sides because on one side, I feel like nowadays with say NBA players playing, you know, a game every three days, two days, you know, traveling on planes to go to different locations. Say rugby players having four four weeks off a year when having to endure high impact forces week in week out training. I think you do need to manage fatigue. You do need to wrap them in cotton wool. And S&C nowadays in, t in some aspects has become more of a job where you're trying to manage the athlete better in terms of boosting recovery instead of trying to boost, you know, beast them in the gym. You know, you're not trying to get them to hit their one rep max um, in on a Tuesday session right before game in, in a game week. You're trying to reduce the fatigue as much fatigue as possible after a game day on Saturday. So the two through in the week on Tuesday, you're still trying to manage their fatigue. You're still not trying, you're trying to wrap them in cotton wool, but at the same time, I want to stress as well that you, you can't just continue to wrap them in cotton wool because then they won't be able to endure the stress that's being imposed on them week in, week out. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? I think I'm, yeah, I hope I'm not like just going over myself a bit. I, I want to stress that you, you, 
when you've there got, needs to be a balance. Yeah. The thing is, the thing that, immediate. and maybe this is just because I don't have as much experience, haven't worked with as many athletes as he has. Obviously, I've never met an athlete that I've had to tell to train harder. Mm. But I don't, I don't know. Have you? Like, I've never met an athlete that I'm like, oh, actually, um, like, come on, let's go. It's yeah. always like, I, like, let's take it back. Like we had a massive week, you know, I've never met an athlete who doesn't want to train hard all the time. So that's why I read that. And I'm like, what? yeah. Um, but maybe he's not talking about, maybe he's not talking about coaches. So I just thought that was very strong language there. Um, yeah. So I just, I just wanted to get into that. With you, And then the other question I had just regarding to what he said was when he says training harder is training smarter, because <laughs> yeah. that's another big statement as well. It is a big straight statement, but I feel like the, the issue is he's put it in a very, very generalizing con- concept. So mm. I, some athletes that, um, you know, that aren't elite per se will, you know, they won't be training as hard. So right. they'll be like, um, I mean, I've heard that before obviously paraphrased but I've heard it where an athlete's like oh I don't need to be um going at eight ninety percent I can just go sixty percent because I'm just managing fatigue or they'll keep saying you know they've heard it from somewhere now they're going oh I'm just managing fatigue managing load <laughs> and all of that yeah and like I don't want to overtrain what yeah yeah but then at mm. times you need to have that I, I don't know I might be wrong as I said as you said perfectly we're, we're not experts here I've, I haven't even got a PhD so um, I'm not trying to say I'm better than Tim Gabbard or any other SNC experienced SNC coaches out there I'm just sharing my view on what I understand and correct me if I'm wrong I do believe you need to li- have a little bit of spike in um, a little spike uh, in, in load at times where say a little 90 percent won't hurt you on a short on a short absolutely um, absolutely without without proper stimulus you're not going anywhere you yeah. do need to train hard um what that means in terms of like a long-term period i'm not sure that always training harder yeah. Yeah. is training smarter yeah and and maybe that's not what he's saying here it just sounds like he's implying you always have to train hard and yeah. so there's there's maybe we can pop it up either on the video or or have links to the paper um, but he said, you know, have a look. He said, have a look. He put all this graph. He said, have a look to on the graph on the right. Actually, it says as chronic workload increases, the injury risk decreases. And I and I read the paper that he put on. It's a good read and it has a lot of good points in it. But I don't think that paper really says what he says in that in the like in what he wrote on LinkedIn. Because that graph, so on on the left graph, there's one graph that says acute um, acute to chronic workload ratio. So that's what we talked about before. And it does say if you get to a point where your your acute workload, so the workload that you did today or yesterday or this week is one and a half times higher than what you've done as an average over the last four weeks. Usually that's what it is, I think. There's a danger, there's a risk, you increase risk because you have too much of a spike and you need those spikes for sure. Um, but I think if when those spikes then in workload from one day to the next are long term without any reprieve from that, that's when it gets dangerous. And then he says, well, look at the graph on the right, which says as chronic workload yeah. increases, um, injury risk decreases. I mean, I would agree with that as well because you're building that base. But I think what's important to understand is that base is built over a long period of time. You know, you don't go from from doing whatever, let's say 50 percent to 100 or to 90 percent. And you just maintain that, you know, for four weeks to build up that chronic workload. Like. That's, I think, a, a danger. <laughs> that's you're going in a danger zone there. And I think that's maybe maybe I'm just reading a bit too into what he what he said in the little brief that he wrote on Instagram. Uh, sorry, on LinkedIn. Um, uh, and, and maybe, you know, that's coming from a lot of experience with, like you said, maybe lower level athletes who actually could be working harder. Um, you know, 
I heard that at the gym the other day as well. Someone was like, oh, like, I'm not going to do this extra, this extra, this extra workout because I don't want to overtrain. Yeah. So, well, overtraining doesn't happen in a day. Like, it's so difficult because I, re- I wrote down, like, when I read his paper, I wrote down all the myths that um, he sort of wanted to display. And I think I'll go, yeah. I'll go through all of the myths. Like, he said, myth one, load explains all injuries. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's difficult, isn't it? Um, yeah. And then absolutely. Like, with that, he he found that um, you know, like that. Oh wow. Sorry, just trying to get everything that I'm thinking out there. So difficult. Basically, he used an example where athletes who slept fewer than eight hours per night were 1.2, 1.7 times greater risk of sporting injury than their counterparts who slept who slept for eight hours or more. So right there, that shows that you know, like, load isn't the only answer. There's so many difficult, like as I said earlier, there's so many different dilemmas than absolutely will, not that load can explain an emotional one. If I'm having, you know during a week say on monday tuesday went thursday friday i'm training hard like is yeah. it training hard but like hitting all the goals that is set out by the snc coach or the performance coach right I've, I've hit all of those goals and i'm hitting the speeds i need to during training i'm hitting the sort of effort i need to the rp I'm, i need to at training on wednesday i have a terrible day that might not be because oh, i haven't managed my fatigue well it might just be because i've heard some bad news from someone or yeah. you know i've I've had a I slept terribly last night. Mm. That's why I'm not performing mm-hmm. today. And that's got nothing to do with fatigue or load that's being yeah. imposed on me. So I think yeah. right there, that says everything. And I think you can agree with that one that it's a bit Absolutely. Because- there's like in there's the external load, right? Which is what you do. And then there's the internal load, which is how your body responds to what yeah. you do. And that internal load, like people have tried to find out a way to calculate it and to track it, but it's so difficult because because then you go into sports psychology, nutrition, what you've slept, how your stress is, what your what your drive into work was like, you know, what your home life is like. Yeah. And all that impacts, you know, how we store energy, how we use energy, what our nervous system is like. Is it prepped for a high speed, high intensity day? Maybe not because of who knows? We almost got into a car crash yesterday. You know, it's it's yeah. It's, like we it's, only we only have so we have we only have a finite amount of energy and resources to use over a day or a week or a month um, to go into training. Uh, yeah. yeah. So absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And then the 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 second myth, um, which is the ten percent rule, um, that training load should not exceed ten percent each week in progression. Yeah. Um, which. I don't know what what it what, like. Th- so I think I pulled this from here, where it said, although rapid changes in training load increase the risk of injury, there is no ten percent rule. In a study of novice runners, a standard eight week training program was compared against an adapted graded thirteen week training program on the risk of sustaining a running related injury. Although, although training load increases were limited to ten percent per week in the intervention group. There were no differences in injury prevalence between the graded training program, which was 20 percent, 21 percent, 21 percent like increase of training yeah. load and the standard training program. So they concluded that some individuals may tolerate weekly progressions around 20, 25 percent, at least for a short period of time, but nothing more, because that's when more injuries would occur. So you could. Yeah, go so that's that. like your spike, your quick spike in your acute yeah. cron- in your acute workload which which you yeah. need you, i found that one interesting as well because he said um it it he mentions there's no 10% rule um but then at the the end of that section he says in this respect limiting training load increases to 10% per week is at best a guideline so he's not throwing it out He's yeah. just maybe changing. I'd love to sit down and ask him or just to find out even like where his at where his mind was, like how his what he was thinking as he was writing this. Maybe he maybe it came off of like talking to coaches that heard that, you know, because I've I've heard that when I was in, in exercise prescription in my undergrad as well. But the way I was taught, it was like, this is a guideline and it's called the 10 percent rule because that's what somebody termed it at one point. But it's not, you know, a hard fast. 
And I think is, and this goes for anything, especially in support science, as soon as you have a hard, fast rule, it's bad news. Like it, it's only bad news because like it's so multifactorial. Everything is so multifactorial, not only in sport, but in life that you can't boil it down to one thing. Right. And it's, and so you can't say, you know, this is the only way to do it. It just cuts, it cuts off any possibility for conversation around it, for relationship to be built and for, you know, discussion of maybe something else. And, and it's, it's going to hurt someone either Mm. physically, psychologically, whatever. So as soon as you see that, I think it's bad news. So maybe he had this conversation with someone who was like, oh, no, it's only 10% rule. Like, it's the rule that's only the way it is, you know? Yeah, yeah. But but absolutely, like, it's just interesting that he says it's not a rule. But then he brings it up and said, the 10% obviously is a good, It's we shouldn't throw out that 10%. It's just think- how do we define that and how do we talk about it? Yeah, it's, it's like, um, I think maybe what he's trying to say is that, you know, in, in, in sports and exercise science, my sports and exercise science course, when we did element, elements of strength and conditioning, we would go yeah. through things that, um, actually, no, the, a better example would be my sport and exercise science course. Um, we would talk about different uh, sort of physiological processes within the human body. And I remember speaking to um, someone about these processes and uh, she would say that, um, oh, that's strange because she did a, a biochemistry course, biomedical course um and she was like oh that's strange that's you know that's wrong like when you look deeper into it that's wrong and i think what he's trying to do there is just 10 percent for the new people who really don't understand so say you're doing snc for i don't know an amateur team in a like low level league uh for cricket then follow the 10 percent rule because you don't have the technology or equipment to understand it deeper whereas if you're say head of performance for an international or British swimming, for example, right? Yeah. British athletics, right there, you'd be able to look deeper into it and maybe actually have like 20% spikes because you can monitor the load so much right. better or monitor how the athlete's feeling so much better because you've got a nutritionist, because you've got a psychologist, because you've got all these different tools that will help yeah. you be more in control. Mm. Get, get, get where yeah, I'm absolutely. Going. Yeah. Maybe that's yeah. what he's trying to do, but I'm not sure. Um, he, he'd be a great guest to have on, um, a great second guest. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's 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 I I. And he and he I, goes, you know, he I think what how many miss were there six or something, five or six, six, five, five, five miss. Uh, and and I found most of them, you know, started off with this isn't true, like there's no ten percent rule. And then he would kind of explain it at the end. He would kind of go back and say, this is a guideline, right? right? And so, and I would totally agree with that uh, in yeah. all of these things. You know, he's, he's the third myth, avoid spikes, spikes and troughs at all costs. Well, actually, we need that. We need spikes. We need troughs. We need rest days. So, so it's not, a, it's, you know, at all costs. Yeah, I would agree. We need them. But also, we don't need too much of them when we have to monitor and make sure that we, we don't have too much because we will overtrain. And in that point, training harder isn't smarter. Um, and then I think the same with myth four that, you know, what it says one and a half is the magic for the acute chronic workload ratio. Whereas if, if it goes higher than one and a half, you're going to get injured. And he's saying that. You know, some people have a have a ratio of greater than one point five, and they don't get injured. Yeah. So, it it was just interesting because of the what the the LinkedIn post was very strong. It could and, be, a and maybe that was, and maybe that was just to get people to read the paper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it Smart. worked. Yeah, it's also like, what? <laughs> I read that. I was like, what? <laughs> Smart, smart guy you got been, me tim you got yeah, me doing this for a while um <laughs> yeah yeah i, I <laughs> tell you what if anyone hasn't read this paper already i'll definitely have a look at it because i managed to yeah in a couple pages of notes from what he said in there and it's actually really interesting it's actually made me a better help me better understand what acwr is and um, mm-hmm. the workload ratio um 
but yeah definitely have a look at it even like he talks about uh, there was another paper that i read which stemmed from this paper which is a better way to determine the acute chronic workload ratio williams et al 2016 and that one essentially says that the you know the the acwr uh, may not be the best way to um, determine someone's acute chronic workload ratio by using the averages of say four weeks and then dividing it by the last week's training load. Maybe there's a better formula that you could use, which will take in some more of the multifactorial dilemmas. So right. have a look at that paper as well. I think we'll post both links on, um, or both DOIs um, on uh, the Instagram or maybe on YouTube, wherever this goes. Yeah, we'll have to find out the best place to put, put those because we definitely want to give you the resources if you want if you're interested in reading more um, so that you also know we're just not spitting absolute garbage up here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fact check us, be critical. Yeah. I think you're right. He got me. It was, it was, you know, you wanted to maybe make a point and have people read into it. I think what I took out of this is, is, um, it's enforced enforced that idea of don't take everything at face value and yeah. and there's no absolutes you can't look at things in an absolute and i think that goes you know for even <laughs> this is getting away from sports science maybe this is a bit too deep but <laughs> but that's like in relationships as well right like as soon as you say it's my way or the highway this is the only way it just shuts everything down yeah yeah you know it's and there's no there's no there's no space for conversation and i think <laughs> i think we're seeing that a little bit in what's happening in the world cup as well um wow obviously, <laughs> <laughs> wow, i know i know <laughs> but I'm shaking, man. I'm shaking. But no, like, you know, there's there's lots of controversy in the World Cup and and obviously being in guitar, especially with like the LGBT community. Right. And. And I, 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 can't, I am so naive or not. I, you know, I can't speak into that. But I think what I what I want to say is what what I've seen, which is scary, I think. And unfortunate is when people have such strong views on either side of anything, not just that, but anything that they just shut down and that they say, this is the only way, this is the right way and anything else is wrong. And they don't allow themselves to be open to have conversation. Because all that's doing is, is polarizing and, and, you know, that shuts down. There's no conversation, there's no relationship and there's no way to understand each other or move forward. And, you know, that goes for that, that goes for this. Like, don't say this is the only way. Say, this is what I think. Let's have a conversation about it. Because the best, the best thing that could happen there is you have a conversation, you learn about the other person, you hopefully gain a better respect for the other person, and you can go away maybe even not agreeing with each other, but having understood each other and building a positive relationship. Yeah. Perfectly said, by the way, David. Perfectly. <laughs> I loved where this, where where that thought ended up. I love it. It was great. <laughs> I was I was on a roller coaster. There was some ups and downs, but uh, oh, yeah, the ride, I know. I the was, ride as a uh, whole was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, that, yeah, but that was so, a great topic. I'll tell you what. That, that the way that was a great way to finish off as well. Um, I really enjoyed actually when you posted this um, and led me to actually reading all of this. I I thoroughly enjoyed it and. Yeah, you summarized it perfectly towards the end. Just allow both <laughs> sides to have conversations, spark up for conversations, spark up yeah. learning. Yeah, be open enough to have a conversation with someone who might not have the same view as you. Yeah, amazing. I'll tell you what, David. Um, I've got goes. quick fire questions. Ah, <laughs> I got quick fire questions for you. Uh, so this should be fun. Oh, right, I got oh, five. Oh, is this the pressure you feel every week? I don't like it. It's, <laughs> it's going back. To it's next scary, week. isn't it? Okay. We're building uh, character. Building character. All right, ready? That's what I want for Christmas. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only question I have. Scratch that out. <laughs> All right. All right. Here we go. Ready? Favorite day of the week? Monday. Kickstart the week. 
cooking or cleaning? Uh, cleaning. Love cleaning. cleaning. All right. What's your favorite drink? Cream soda from Sparletta, Cream. the South African one. <laughs> oh, wow. Fancy. <laughs> Most hated chore? Cleaning. Cleaning. That's, <laughs> that's why you keep cooking. All right. No, or this, this is funny. You have to either never wear a shirt or never wear shoes. Which one are you picking? Oh, um, Liver King's my boy, so I'm, I'm both. No. Never wearing a shirt and shoes. <laughs> both. No shoes or shirts. I don't want any of them. Oh, that's hilarious. Liver King. King. Um, no, I'd, I'd have to pick um, never wearing shoes. Never wearing shoes. Yeah, yeah. Just choose where you walk carefully. I guess, but man, your feet would get so cold. Imagine but I guess drink. shirt, more surface area. Yeah. I don't know. I've got oh, Can we go back to your favorite day, Monday? Or is it because it's oh, International it's... Chess Day? <laughs> hey, that's every day, David. That's every day. That's get that every day. Um, don't I limit me. Monday because it's, if you're going to hate Monday, then your rest of your week is ruined. If you're going with that mindset, it's not going to be a good week. So you've got to enjoy Monday. Embrace the embrace. Uh, Wow. Embrace the start of the week. I thought I was going deep. <laughs> you. And that and, and let's take new that job, new map. Okay. So it is. Embracing a relationship. Uh, <laughs> and that's why and both sides of the, the argument part should of our be a podcast. <laughs> relationships. <laughs> Tim Gabbett, what's his views on what's his views on relationships? Yeah. But yeah. That was awesome. I actually enjoyed that. Now that it's that was over. great. Yeah, I saw that on LinkedIn. And I was like, "Oh, this let's let's chat about this. That sounds fun." Yeah, awesome. yeah. Good for that, David. Lovely. Awesome, great, Matt. Why don't you take us out? This has been the RSS podcast. We're out. <laughs>